Hey, faithful listener, welcome to season six of the Bible Explained podcast, the podcast where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and enjoy today's discussion from the book of Joshua. Well, hello and happy Friday, faithful listeners. I hope you are enjoying a nice cup of coffee on this lovely Friday morning. I have been just loving the weather recently where I am at. Finally, everything is cleared up. And (laughs) the exterminator came. Remember I told you guys I have a cockroach issue in my house, which oh, it's just so disgusting to think about. Well, anyway, hopefully that's over with because the exterminator came, did his thing, and I'm just hoping that the cockroaches are gone forever. That would be amazing. So I am very happy today because I have a lot to celebrate. A cockroach-free house. (laughs) So share a cup of coffee with me and uh, celebrate with me that the cockroaches are hopefully dead and out of my house. So let's read Joshua chapter 2 today, verses 1 through basically the entire thing. 1 through 24, the entire thing. So I'm going to be discussing this out of the WEB version, as I always do, for those of you who don't know and are just tuning in to season 6 of the podcast. I read out of the WEB version because it is a public domain version of the Bible. Most versions of the Bible are not public domain, and I need like special written permission to be able to use them, and I just don't want to have to deal with that. So that's why I use the W.E.B. version of the Bible. And actually, I do really like the W.E.B. I have found it to be a pretty good version for the most part. And I also love the reason that they wrote the 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 W.E.B. And it'll say it right on their website if you go over there. We think that the Bible should be in the public domain. And that is why they wrote it. They took a lot of time and energy to write something that is um, a more cohesive public domain version of the Bible. So anyway, let's read Joshua chapter 2 today. Feel free to grab the version of the Bible you prefer and also that cup of coffee to celebrate with me. And let's read about Rahab the harlot. Joshua the son of Nun secretly sent two men out of Shittim as spies, saying, Go and view the land, including Jericho. They went and came into the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab and slept there. The king of Jericho was told, Behold, men of the children of Israel came in here tonight to spy out the land. Jericho's king sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered into your house, for they have come to spy out all the land. The woman took the two men and hid them. Then she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I didn't know where they came from. About the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, the men went out. Where the men went, I don't know. Pursue them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order on the roof. The men pursued them along the way to the fords of the Jordan River. As soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Before they had lain down, she came up to them on the roof. And she said to the men, I know that Yahweh has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and to Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we heard it, our hearts melted, and there wasn't any more spirit in any man because of you. For Yahweh your God, he is God, in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore, please swear to me by Yahweh, since I have dealt kindly with you, that you will also deal kindly with my father's house and give me a true sign that you will save alive my father, my mother, my brothers and my sisters and all that they have and will deliver our lives from death. The men said to her, our life for yours. If you don't talk about this business of ours and it shall be when Yahweh gives us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was on the side of the wall and she lived on the wall. She said to them, Go to the mountain, lest the pursuers find you. Hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers have returned. Afterward, you may go your way. The men said to her, We will be guiltless of this, your oath, which you have made us to swear. Behold, when we come into the land, tie this line of scarlet thread in the window which you used to let us down. Gather to yourself into the house your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household. It shall be that whoever goes out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood will be on his head, and we will be guiltless. Whoever is with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head if any hand is on him. But if you talk about this business of ours, then we shall be guiltless of your oath which you've made us swear to you. 
She said, let it be as you have said. And she sent them away and they departed. Then she tied the scarlet line in the window. They went and came to the mountain and stayed there three days until the pursuers had returned. The pursuers sought them all along the way, but didn't find them. Then the two men returned, descended from the mountain, crossed the river, and came to Joshua, the son of Nun. They told him all that had happened to them. They said to Joshua, Truly Yahweh has delivered all the land into our hands. Moreover, all the inhabitants of the land melt away before us. Forty years prior to this story, Moses had sent out spies into the land of Canaan to spy it out. But that ended up turning out really badly, right? Because the spies came back and were like, this land is dangerous and scary and all this stuff. But now Joshua does it. So why? (laughs) That was the first thing I thought. I was like, why would Joshua repeat the same thing? But actually, he didn't repeat the same thing. First and foremost, he only sent out two men, not like a whole bunch of spies the way Moses had earlier. Secondly, it says he secretly sent them out. It was not a public thing. Because last time when Moses sent out the all the spies, they came back very publicly. They came back with all this stuff and they were like, this land is dangerous and it's very scary and we can't do it. But these two men went out to spy out the land. And from my understanding of this, this seems to be God ordained. So I don't know if God told Joshua to do this or Joshua just had an inkling that this was a good idea. I don't know. I don't exactly know, but it turned out to be a very good idea because honestly, God ended up saving Rahab and her entire family, which Rahab ended up being in the line of Jesus. Uh, Rahab was one of Jesus's ancestors. So God clearly had a plan for Rahab. And if these two men had never gone out, they never would have met Rahab the prostitute. They would never have met her. And Rahab would have died in the battle along with her entire family. But because Rahab's heart was different, and you can see that here, you can see that Rahab had a heart for God in a sense, because she admitted to the two spies that God was in fact the real God. And Jericho was filled with a whole bunch of people that didn't believe in God and were absolutely terrified of the Israelite people. So anyway, Joshua sends these two spies out. We don't know who they are. A lot of them say that um, one of them was Rahab's husband, (laughs) who is mentioned in the line of Christ. I forget his name, but we don't know who the two spies are. We don't know. So the two spies go to Jericho and they come to the house of this prostitute named Rahab. And they stay there overnight. Now, of course, this... (laughs) Now, of course, people are always like, oh, they went to prostitute's house, huh? (laughs) But to be fair, it really was a great place to hide because prostitutes are visited, right, by a lot of men. And these two men really had a good cover by going and staying at a prostitute's house. That could have been the reason. We don't actually know the reason. It also could have been that they just wanted to sleep with prostitutes. I don't know. We know that the Israelites in general were probably not super against Uh, going and sleeping with other women. But I do want to point out that it doesn't say that. It does not say that actually anything indecent happened. Here's all it says. It says, they came to the house of the prostitute whose name was Rahab and they slept there. So it could be that they really were just looking for a cover. You know, they were spies. They're trying to be like incognito. So they went and stayed at a prostitute's home because that would have been the best cover for them. And that's kind of where I lean on this. Um, I don't, you know me, if you guys have been listening to the podcast, you know that I am not at all ever afraid to like call out the sins of the pa- patriarchs and the people of the Old Testament. Cause I, I know people have a tendency to be like, oh, you know, the people of the Old Testament never sinned and never did anything wrong, but that's not the truth. They were human beings just like you and I, and every human being has his or her flaws. So you know me, but, but just because scripture does not say that anything happened, And scripture is not afraid to say when stuff happens. I I just think that personally, they went to go sleep there. And it was the best place for them to sleep without looking suspicious. However, the king of Jericho figured it out somehow. We don't know how. We don't know what happened that they realized that spies were in the city. But they found out that these two men had gone to a prostitute's home. 
and they knew that they were at Rahab the prostitute's home. So it says that the king of Jericho sends for Rahab. And he says, bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered into your house, for they have come to spy out all this land. So the king's messengers are at her door and they're like, bring out those guys who slept with you last night. Bring them out. They're spies from the land of Israel. We want them. So Rahab quickly goes in and hides the two men. She hides them up on the roof. And so she says to the to the messengers of the king, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, those two guys, I didn't know they were spies. You know, they came to me last night. They did their thing. But before, you know, the gate closed, they left really quickly. So you better hurry if you want to catch them. You better go now. If you go now, you can probably catch up to them is what she says. <laughs> And they're just like, oh, yeah, yeah, that probably happened. And so they leave to go pursue these two men, the two spies. But meanwhile, they're still in the house the whole time. And so the king's messengers began pursuing the spies when Rahab was like, yeah, they left. You better go find them. So Rahab goes up to the spies on the roof and she says to them in verse nine, I know that Yahweh has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and all of the inhabitants of this land melt away before you. So she says, you know, I believe that Yahweh has given you this land. And, you know, my countrymen are terrified of you guys. We're all terrified. And she says, we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, to Sihon and to Og, whom you utterly destroyed. So Rahab remembered all these stories and these had happened years prior to this years. I mean, the whole thing with Egypt had happened 40 years prior to this. But Rahab was remembering all these stories of Yahweh's greatness. So Rahab, the difference between her and all the countrymen was that Rahab feared God. She didn't fear the Israelites. She feared God. All the other countrymen feared the Israelites. They didn't fear God. Rahab knew that Yahweh was real. She had heard these stories and she had come to believe in Yahweh. Because here's what she says. For Yahweh, your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. So yeah, Rahab began to fear God when she was hearing all these stories. And she recognized God as being Yahweh, God as being the real God of heaven and of earth. So that was the difference between Rahab and everybody else. And God knew this change of heart that Rahab had had. And it's so crazy to me because Rahab was the only person, her and her family, that was spared in the entire area of Jericho. She was the only one spared. And that's because she was the only one who had this heart change for God that we know of. And she even says that. She even says, my countrymen fear you guys. They didn't fear God, but Rahab feared God. And so because of that, she was able to have a heart for God. So now she says to the two spies, she says, you know, because I didn't give you guys up and allow the king of Jericho to kill you, Please do this kindness for me and save me when God allows you to take this land. Save us, is what she says. And so the spies, they say, yes, we will do that for you. You have treated us very kindly. You have given us a place to stay for the night. You didn't uh, give us up. We will treat you and your family with kindness. And so they kind of go over this whole deal that they make with each other. And the two spies say to Rahab, your entire family needs to be inside your house on the day of destruction, basically. If anybody is outside of your doors, what happens to them can't be blamed on us. They have to be inside your house. And so um, this would probably make Rahab work very quickly because she doesn't know exactly when the Israelites are coming. She knows it's going to be very soon, but she doesn't know when. And it did take some time. So I'm going to guess Rahab right after the men left her house, she went out and bought all sorts of provisions <laughs> because her family was going to be holed up in that house for probably a couple weeks, honestly, at this point before God totally gives the uh, city of Jericho over to the Israelites. But anyway, here's what happens. Rahab 
has this scarlet cord. Okay, it's like a scarlet rope that she had in her house, and she lived on the wall. Okay, so uh, if you look at ancient maps of Jericho, it's actually really cool the way the city was set up. It's actually said that Jericho was the first ever walled city that they know of. So Jericho built these walls around the city, and there was two walls that they know of, the inner wall and then the outer wall, and she probably lived on the outer wall, I would guess. And the inner wall, I'm sure, was for the princes and kings and whoever else lived in the region of Jericho. And so since, you know, Rahab was a harlot, she lived on the outer side of the wall, and her house was actually built into the wall, which archaeologists did discover that in Jericho there were houses built into the wall itself, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, Rahab's house was in probably the outer limits of Jericho, and which, by the way, the city was not very big. They say it was about 80 houses approximately and about like six to 10 acres around. So it's not a huge city, but it was still very fortified. But anyway, so Rahab, it says here in Joshua 2 that she lived basically in the wall, kind of, or rather the houses were were built as part of the wall. And she had a window there. It says here in verse 15, she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was on the side of the wall and she lived on the wall. So she let them out of the window with a scarlet cord that she had. And so the the spies, before they leave, they say, okay, here's what we're going to do. When God gives us the city of Jericho, make sure to have all your family members inside the house and also keep this scarlet cord hung through the window. Now, of course, this scarlet rope is signifying Jesus's blood that like washed Rahab's house clean, basically. But regardless, it was still a way to distinguish Rahab's house apart from all the other houses on the wall. And so that's why the men told her, hey, keep this scarlet rope here hung so that we know which house is yours so that we do not destroy it. Because at this point, the men had no clue how God was going to help them destroy the city of Jericho. So it makes sense that they would want a marker for Rahab's house so that they wouldn't accidentally destroy her and her family. So it says that the men went and hid from the pursuers up in the mountains, and they stayed there for three days until the pursuers had returned back to Jericho. And so the pursuers sought them all the way, but didn't find them. So the two men returned to Joshua. They crossed the river. They came to Joshua and they told him everything. They told him about Rahab, the prostitute. They told him about how she uh, protected them. But he also told them about the city and about what Rahab had said, where everybody was so fearful. So this is very different from 40 years prior to this, when the spies had gone out before. Because these two spies now, are coming back with this speech of hope. And they're like, look, God has truly given us this land. Like these people are fearful of us. They are scared. They are melting in our presence. God has definitely given us this land. So it's just so different from the spies that went out 40 years prior to this, who came back with all of this nonsense of God can't help us here. We are too small for them. They are so big and strong and everything else. But now it is time for the Israelites to take the promised land just as God had promised them so many years before this, just as God promised Abraham hundreds of years before this. It was now time for the Israelites to go into the promised land. What I really like about this story to conclude is that Rahab was a prostitute. She was like the lowest of the low, according to basically everybody, right? And yet God protected her and God saved her entire family. So no matter what anybody has ever done or whatever sins they have committed in the past, God can redeem all of that and he still accepts everybody in. And Rahab was not an Israelite woman. And yet God was willing to save her and her entire family. And so that's like the hope in this story is you can see all throughout scripture, God pulling people towards him, whether they were Israelite or not. God always pulled people towards him and he never, ever rejected anybody that had a heart for him or wanted him for themselves. Basically, you can see that Rahab absolutely wanted God for herself, for her own God. And God didn't push her away. 
He didn't do anything like that. He didn't say, oh, you're a prostitute. You're not good enough for me. No, as we're going to find out, God absolutely accepted her into the Israelite family. Well, faithful listeners, I've got nothing else to say. I've said a lot today, so I'm going to let you all go with a happy listening and God bless. Bless.